In the face of growing global tensions and threatening rhetoric, the likes of which haven't been seen in half a century, I developed this morbid fascination with civil defense. Though, usually things I read or videos I watch on this subject are usually focused on the American side of things. Given the current state of affairs, I thought it essential to re-examine Canada's plans for contingency and the safety of its citizens and officials in the unlikely yet catastrophic event of nuclear war. The biggest threat to North America, apart from direct invasion, was mass bombing. Canada had introduced air raid measures that consisted of early warning radar, blackouts, rescue and emergency relief organizations, as well as public air raid shelters, stockpiling food and medical supplies, and developing evacuation plans for likely target areas. After the war, however, with the development of nuclear weapons and the advent of the Cold War, Canadians soon had much more to consider if they were to keep these measures from becoming obsolete. Their civil defense policies evolved rapidly during the 50s and focused on strategies for firefighting, first aid, and urban evacuation until, like their allies, the government launched a campaign to encourage the construction of home fallout shelters. They produced pamphlets, posters, films, and other various forms of media in an attempt to educate the public on how to build these shelters, the effects of radiation and fallout, and useful survival skills. Around the same time, the government authorized the construction of emergency government headquarters, popularly known as Diefenbunkers, named for the Prime Minister of the day, John Diefenbaker. These bunkers were built in great secrecy in rural locations surrounding major cities across the country. Typically, these facilities were two stories underground, with the largest being four stories beneath the earth. These bunkers were designed to withstand a near miss from a nuclear blast, with each bunker protected by massive blast doors, as well as air filters combined with positive pressure to prevent radiation from entering the facilities. These facilities were stocked to support several dozen people for an extended period of several weeks. Following the end of the Cold War, all but one of these bunkers were decommissioned and either covered over, demolished, or sold, with the remaining facility serving as an itinerant accommodations barracks. One was turned into a museum, and another was even turned into a data center. Over time, the public began to lose enthusiasm for such programs. The costs were high, and once the world's powers had enough warheads to annihilate themselves many times over, the odds of surviving such a war dwindled. Canada's efforts of civil defense during the Cold War could be seen as a failure to some, mainly due to the difficulties that arose from attempts to educate vast swathes of the population on how to protect themselves in an ever-changing political and technological landscape. In addition, most Canadians never fully accepted the thought of themselves as citizen defenders, like their American counterparts, willing to give their lives if necessary in helping cope with what was perceived as a military issue. Canadians were constantly reminded of the dangers of nuclear weapons, producing huge amounts of anxiety and apathy that undermined the efforts of civil defense organizers. Some thought it pointless to spend so much to prepare for their assured annihilation. Canada's civil defense policies during the Cold War were vastly different than they are now. Today, Canada's civil defense efforts aren't as prominent in the minds of its citizens as they may have been during those tense times, but there are still contingency plans, or con plans, in place to protect citizens and keep the government running during an emergency. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, thinking shifted away from the notion of nuclear war and now a whole generation of public servants hadn't had to deal with such circumstances. It was thought that if there were a nuclear event, it would come in the form of a meltdown, or even a terrorist dirty bomb. However, following the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014, and increased tensions with North Korea after their missile tests, the government reviewed its con plans in preparation of a potential nuclear strike. Should the capital region become unviable, the federal cabinet would be evacuated to bunkers in one of two secure military bases, referred to only as Alpha and Bravo sites. 
It's worth noting that in the 50s, this evacuation process was rehearsed with cabinet members being picked up by helicopter right on the lawn of Parliament Hill. Pretty cool. These plans are part of the government's overall plan for the continuity of constitutional government. These plans attempt to ensure minimal disruption to critical services so that any remaining officials may attempt to pick up the pieces after nuclear war. Notably absent from these plans, though, are the public bomb shelters and supply stockpiles of the past that at least attempted to ensure the safety of a portion of the population. But what protection could you really offer to millions of people spread over a vast country during an attack from potentially hundreds of warheads? I ultimately came away with the feeling that Canada, like the United States, like so many of its allies, really has no viable civil defense plan. Understanding that a thermonuclear blast is an incredibly violent event that can decimate an entire city in an instant. With hundreds of bombs going off simultaneously, it really comes down to geography and dumb luck whether or not you survive a nuclear exchange. There are things you can do, sure, to increase your chances of survival, which may be expensive and short term in their efficacy. The elite would attempt to survive in their secret bunkers trying to keep democracy alive, but even the Diefen bunkers would only support life for so long. What kind of world would be waiting for us on the other side of those blast doors? There wouldn't be one. The idea of civil defense or of any kind of contingency after such an apocalyptic war is laughable. It seems so obvious when you think about it, as hard to think as it may be. Not for lack of trying, it's almost impossible to defend oneself from the power of the atom unleashed upon them. <laughs>